I'm Matt Forio, and this is Chisel This. Today's episode is how to condition your listener to understand, visualize, expect, and even empathize with the points that you paint through your lyricism. I have always said that writing a rap is a lot like making an argument. If you come out and just say it, it may feel a little abrasive and almost unwarranted or undeserved. It's like starting a story with the climax and expecting the viewer to care about the stakes. There must be some leading up to that moment, you know? And it's not just to preserve that rewarding punchline either, but it's to aid the listener in understanding and visualizing what it is that you were trying to say on the first, if not second, listen. Something I've learned the hard way is that you have to adapt your content to the medium that it is consumed through. If you're writing a story or a poem that is meant to be read without audible assistance, it lends itself to allowing more cryptic allegories that provide fewer context clues. But a rap or a song plays out in real time, regardless of the consumer's individual pacing, lest they interrupt the piece to pause or rewind. Now that's not the intention of a piece with accompanying music now, is it? So if you just jump out with that confusing and foreign rhetoric in the middle of your song, we don't have the time to decode it, nor do we want to, we just want to get it. However, if you preface this idea of yours with relevant rhetoric and world building, it will be easier to click in our minds. Your goal is to condition the listener or prime their expectations to receive a certain pre-calculated outcome. This just so happens to be an effective way to argue, especially in politics. You see a lot of issues use emotional strings to gain support, but even as simple as vote for me or don't vote for them, if the desire is to convince someone to vote for me. I don't just say vote for me, eh? Hey. Instead, I show nice pictures of me engaging with the community and rave reviews from my constituents. I listen to him more than any other artist, famous or I guess not famous, I would call him. And a list of my achievements and goals. And then I say, vote for me. Conversely, if my desire is to convince you not to vote for my opponent, I prime the viewer with frowny face pictures of the opponent, negative reviews. I have just as many chisel this shirts as I have pants on right now. Predictions of their failures. And then I say, don't vote for them. Because if I just say don't vote, then why would you not vote? Maybe it's lacking so much thought that I just decided to vote for the guy you tell me not to vote for. This is also an effective tactic in magic, except the goal there is to misdirect, or what magicians call forcing the subject to behave a certain way. I can tell you to touch a card instead of taking one so that you are primed to touch one of the ones that I'm forcing on you instead of pulling one out of my grasp. Or magician's choice. I give you a choice and then I react in a way that gives me my desired outcome. If you choose this one, I'll say, okay, take that card. But if you choose this one, I'll say, okay, we'll get rid of that card. That way I keep this card in play. That's my desired outcome. The art of conditioning your listener for your lyrics is very similar to this technique. However, the goal with writing is to direct instead of misdirect. You see, the reward in magic is believing that you had a free choice and you still were fooled. However, when this happens in rap, either accidentally or just as a matter of having no direction at all, it makes the listener feel confused and cheated instead. Now don't get me wrong, there can still be plot twists and elements of surprise in your lyrics, but I'm really micro-focusing here on a line-by-line -line basis, understanding the transition from line A to line B. It's time for a concrete example to demonstrate. A writer and member of the Chisler's school named Unparagon sent me his rap to review, as many student Chislers can do as part of the Chisler's school on Patreon. In one stanza, he wrote, Verbal abuse turned to physical in their mind. This they were clear to convey. Luckily for me, they didn't have time to make me scream. A meteor just hit their swimming pool. Now this made me very confused when I reached that last line. The first three seem all together, and now we get this really otherworldly metaphor. I didn't know what to make of it after reading it several times, let alone listening to it one time. His intention was to illustrate a catastrophic mess that would be unfamiliar to the average man, to demonstrate how exaggerated his own personal ills are. See, no one would believe him if he used a meteor crashing in his pool as an excuse for anything, really. But you don't really get all that without context clues. See, if I were to condition you to that concept, before I state it, 
it makes much more sense and it feels like it belongs. So here's what I changed it to. Verbal abuse turned to physical in their mind. And inside of mine, I was playing the fool. My out of this world excuses had run dry like a meteor just hit my swimming pool. I did three things here. One, I primed the word meteor with relevant rhetoric out of this world. This world building allows the viewer to hear that word meteor without it feeling out of place like it did originally. Second, I laid the foundation for what the punchline could potentially mean by saying I'm out of excuses. And third, I worded it as my excuses ran dry, adding that double meaning, the pool would be dry if a meteor splashed into it. Now you will find the need to do this mostly if you conceive your punchline before the lines that precede it. If the dunk comes up in your mind before the layup. For example, in an old song of mine, I came up with this line by itself, unaided, just a line in my head. Do I gotta be a ruler just to show you I'm straight? Meaning, I'm not messed up in the head for thinking I can be successful. Nah, I'm straight. Do I gotta be a king to prove that to you? Do I gotta rule the rap game? Do I have to be on top of all the culture? Do I have to buy into the mumble rap? No, but the double meaning here uses the words ruler and straight because rulers are straight. Now, even though the line works fine on its own, I wanted to introduce to you, the listener, the world of royalty and possibly one of school utensils to blend that line with the lyrics that surround it. The punchline shouldn't stand out like a sore thumb. Of course, it's a better line by definition, but it should derive from and also contribute to the lines that surround it. So I began the stanza like this. Last time on the track, I was coronated by the royal greats. They put a throne in my face, but I don't want no crown thrown in my face if I gotta be a ruler just to show you I'm straight. Last time on the track, I was coronated by the royal greats. They put a throne in my face, but I don't want no crown thrown in my face if I gotta be a ruler just to show that I'm straight. I even made a part of the sentence that comes before it. It's all one piece. See how you're already in that world of royalty before you hear the word ruler? Coronated. Royal, greats, throne, crown. All of these words condition you to think that this iteration of the word ruler has a connotation associated with royalty instead of being this kind of ruler. However, it directs you to this double meaning punchline once you hear the word straight. Now you're thinking of this ruler and tying it with the royal ruler. Then I keep the momentum going. Use this as an opportunity to shift the world into a new style of language. I'm bringing the yardstick. Now kids, are my bars sick? No. Tell me what they aren't. Whack. I'll have none of this. Let me see each one of the fingertips on your class list. If your class list and keep whistling Dixie, then you're about to get brand dished. I'm bringing the yardstick. Now kids, are my bars sick? No. Tell me what they are in. Whack. I'll have none of this. Let me see each one of the fingertips on your class list. If your class list and keep whistling Dixie, then you're about to get brand dick. I used that double meaning of ruler to transition into this new world of vocabulary, all about the classroom. Yardstick, kids, none, fingertips, classless. And I create a visual of a uh, nun as the teacher bringing the hammer down on you from disobeying in the classroom. Ergo brandishing you brand dish Dixie brand dishes. All of these words belong together and you don't feel confused to hear one after the other. Remember, your job is to build a connected world for your audience to live in and find words that would be familiar to them once you've invited them in. If you can do that, you will resonate much more on an emotional level. As your words infiltrate the minds of your listeners, they help them compose an image and create personal connections for each individual. That's not possible if the dunk has no layup and if the world is not built before you get to that punchline. Strive to use language that creates a consistent environment and you will become a better storyteller and a better argument maker. If you enjoyed this shorter episode of Chisel This and think that there are more things regarding writing and rapping that you'll be interested in learning about, feel free to leave a comment and suggest a new episode. Or you can be part of the Chiseler School where just like Unparagon, he got his lyrics chiseled right there on the spot and now you can just put them right into his new rap. Also, if you just wanna hear me talk about more things more frequently, I've decided to use my gaming channel as an opportunity to practice more off the cuff style speaking. So I've been doing that over on Matt Forio VG. You can go subscribe right now to see more content like this throughout the week. That's about more light stuff being video games. Also something that I enjoy thoroughly, if you couldn't tell.
I'm Matt Forio, and that's all for you today. We're gonna play video games, chilling all day with fingers and blades, taking it slow, but I go so fast that I'm forgetting the day. Taking a second to step out the frame, vision was missing the light of the day. Looking outside at the sky, my eyes, they might disintegrate. Hey, never let it go. I'm gonna let the sun go down until I say so. It's a stay.